Hey guys, Tony here, and today we're going to be talking about the universes beyond World of Magic. Not specifically about the new Marvel and Magic the Gathering crossover that just got announced. I'm actually really excited to talk about that, and I got a bunch of predictions for that. But uh, today I want to talk about more universes beyond in a general sense, or in a holistic sense. Is it bad for the game, and is it really a problem? Spoiler alert, I'm going to argue it isn't. I do have some arguments that I've heard from people that do argue that it is kind of bad for the game, and I, I want to talk about those too. I don't want to just be like, you know, hailing the universe is beyond, because I know it's very polarizing, and some people just aren't into it. And we are going to talk about that. So, first, what is Universes Beyond? Universes Beyond is basically Magic the Gathering crossing over with other intellectual properties. It started with The Walking Dead, or if you want to get really technical, it started with like My Little Pony, I believe. That might have been the first one. Hasbro owned both Wizards and My Little Pony at the time, so that makes sense that that would be a crossover at some point. They also did the same thing with Transformers at one point. Universes Beyond is the evolution of that, in my opinion. It started with The Walking Dead when you had The Walking Dead Secret Lair. It had a bunch of very polarizing characters thrown into the world of Magic the Gathering that did not very much fit the setting, and people were really mad about that. And even at the time, I was also mad about that. I felt like this IP jumping into my game was diluting the game. You know, it kind of, it was the, it's a crossover episode meme from BoJack Horseman. That's how I felt. But then as more Universes Beyond came out, uh, the Street Fighter one got me specifically. I was really into the Chun-Li one and the Ken one. I wanted to build commander decks around them. And then the Warhammer ones come out. It really changed my perspective on what Universes Beyond can be. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I once really disliked this product line and now really dig it. And I want to talk about why that changed for me and why I really don't think people are mad about Universes Beyond so much as they are mad about the rate of Universes Beyond coming out. Also, the last thing I'm going to end up talking about today is the original intent behind Deckmaster. And if you know what Deckmaster is, it was kind of like a GURPS for Magic the Gathering and Netrunner and a bunch of other games. Battletech, I believe, was one. And if you don't know what GURPS is, it's the generic universal role-playing system that Fallout 1 and 2 uses or variant thereof. Basically, a rule set that's meant to be applied to many things that all kind of work the same and lets you, you know, experience the same thing without having to learn everything over again, over and over again. Welcome to tonight's main event. So why don't people like Universe Beyond, or what do they typically say when they say they don't like Universe Beyond? Well, they typically say it breaks immersion, and I get it. I really do but it doesn't for me, and it doesn't for a lot of people at this point. It definitely did when it first came out. When, when, like I said, when The Walking Dead first came out, it broke a lot of people's immersion. People were very much, uh, the world is ending, Magic the Gathering is over as we know it, and what, five, six, four years later, wherever we're at now, it's still going really strong. We're getting way more Universe Beyond, and there has to be a reason for that, right? It can't be breaking immersion that much, else it, Wizards would be printing it because it wouldn't be selling. So it has to be something more than that. Even if it is breaking immersion, is that a problem? I would say for some formats, yes. And for some formats, probably not. Now there is a caveat to this. I'd say for standard, if they print other IP directly into standard, I say that might be an issue. Uh, standard is your premier format where all the story happens and all the lore happens. So printing anything else since that feels weird. The D&D set did feel weird to me. And it's the same issue for modern. And this is extra prevalent in modern as some of the most powerful decks in modern right now, Rakdos Scam and uh, Tron and pretty much any winning deck is using Lord of the Rings cards, which feels off to me. Uh, I just lost to a one ring deck yesterday in an RCQ and that felt weird. But yeah, no, I think the bigger issue is not because most because most of the sets that come out for Universes Beyond don't actually go into a standard format. So it shouldn't really be breaking that much immersion. And if you want to talk about Commander, you don't really have to engage with it. There are very few, if any, Commander competitive events or events where you can't say, I don't want to play with you because you're playing with Negan. I keep saying Negan because I have a Negan deck. I do know other Universes Beyond characters, to be clear. Uh, Marnus Kelgar is another deck I just finished building, actually. But anyway, other than Lord of the Rings going into modern, which uh, arguably is a problem, the other thing that people say is that Universes Beyond, especially the reskins of cards that are actually played, are an issue. 
uh, readability of cards on a table or readability of cards, quickly looking at a card and saying, I know that that is pure steel paladin, um, is super relevant in a game state where you're trying to make a lot of actions in a time limit. Me having Ash, Destined Survivor on board instead of a pure steel paladin or an art that is invocative of a pure steel paladin could be an issue, and that is fair. Asking competitive players to know 15 different arts for, I don't know, Sigarda's Aid or, or Shadow Spear could be a really big issue. And all of that's a fair point. Readability of cards is really important. The problem's already here, and it's not really going to go away, unfortunately. I do agree that that is a problem, though. The other issue that people are talking about as far as Universes Beyond being bad for the game is that Wizards seems to be focusing what should be its story and development teams on trying to figure out how to make these other IPs work within Magic the Gathering than focusing on their story. We just had March of the Machine end and it was kind of bad. And once again, I have no idea what's happening in Wilds of Ill's Reign right now. I'm not even trying to keep track of the story. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with Doctor Who. If you thought this story was based, you're right. I just started watching Doctor Who because of Magic the Gathering, you know? And I'm really enjoying it. I probably would not have started watching it if it wasn't for Magic the Gathering. And I do know some Doctor Who fans who start, who at least picked up the Commander decks. They may not be playing it right now, but at least picked up the Magic the Gathering decks because they're Doctor Who fans and they're like, oh, Magic the Gathering is doing a thing for us. So it's definitely doing the thing that Wizards wants to do and the other IP wants them to be doing as cross-pollinating their audiences. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. It, it really does take the focus away from Magic Story some of the time, I will agree. But I don't know if that's inherently bad. Magic only releases four standard sets a year and well other than aftermath and any tertiary sets but really we're not always getting bombarded with magic story but we are always getting bombarded with magic product so again i ask is the issue that it's diluting the game or is it that we're just getting too much product the other really big positive i see is does anyone remember the marvel trading card game no of course you don't i barely remember it and that sucks. I'm sure it was really fun. I'm sure it had some diehard fans. If it was in an already working system, I think it had a much better chance of surviving, right? Looking at games that have died, like Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z's had a couple card games. I know Naruto's had at least two card games, and One Piece is on its second card game. They keep dying and having to come back, and all the cards you had before are useless now, and you can't really use them, and it just feels bad. Unlike something like Magic the Gathering, which has been around for 30 years, and its intended purpose was always to be a system, or at least Deckmasters was. Now we have these Walking Dead cards, which granted some people aren't going to like. But 10 years from now, you'll still be able to use Negan in your commander deck, and you won't have to basically have these cards for a dead game that doesn't exist anymore, and you still get your IP represented in gameplay form. Look at Warhammer. Warhammer hasn't had a card game to my knowledge, maybe it has. I don't play Warhammer. But the Warhammer decks are fantastic, and for the rest of time, you'll be able to have a battle box of four commander decks that just sit together and have a self-contained experience that you could also rip open and add to your future commander decks, or add to your legacy decks, or whatever. These games don't die once they phase out, once their time is coming gone. They're always still relevant. That's a really nice thing Magic the Gathering and Universe Beyond has allowed that wasn't really a thing before. Have you noticed how many successful restaurants are theme-based these days? The other problem, not problem, that I notice is cards like The Ring coming into Magic the Gathering, which are not Magic the Gathering cards, but breaking the format. And I agree that's not a Lord of the Rings or Universe Beyond problem. That's more of a design problem because if it wasn't the one ring this card would have been something else same thing with orcish bowmasters which i would argue as i've only seen a couple of lord of the rings uh properties i'm not a big lord of the rings fan but that effect is relatively generic shoot a thing make a guy uh whenever your opponent's draw guards that could go into that could have been any card it's not a lord of the rings problem that this card exists it's just sometimes bad cards get through oko existed you know we want to talk about immersion breaking things i don't want to think about the fact that oko can turn my nico bolus the guy who enslaved an entire plane and uh captured all the planeswalkers could be turned into a 3-3 elk or whatever like that's immersion breaking to me the this one fantasy world intersecting with this other fantasy world is much less immersion breaking than that although i will admit they are both immersion breaks i don't think that university beyond is really a problem in that sense it's not as though Gandalf is coming and hanging out with Jace literally within the lore. Neither, the lores are still intact, 
So my immersion is not really affected very much when I see these cards played because I know that Super Mario and Donkey Kong are not going to go to ch with Chandra to learn her fire spells and Mario's not going to use those abilities in Super Mario Wonder. You know what I mean? There are plenty of broken cards in Magic the Gathering, The Ring, and Oak Super Masters, but so, I would argue, Fury and Grief could be, Oko could be, you know? Urza in Commander, if you want to uh, talk about where these cards will actually see play, for the most part, it's Commander, the universe is beyond exist, and we already have Urza that breaks the game. We had uh, Golos, the Tireless Pilgrim, you know? Cards break the game all the time, so that doesn't really help my immersion, and I don't think it's an argument for why Universes Beyond shouldn't be added to the game. And also, the focus on making these things work. Gavin Verri has talked a lot about how it took a lot of effort to make the uh, Doctor Who decks work with him at the gathering. He had to get his team and focus them to make sure this felt right for this Doctor, or this felt right for this companion, or one of this episode represented in such a way. And that seems like it takes a lot of effort. I don't think that a lot of people think that the same amount of effort is being put into Magic the Gathering story as it currently stands. Again, for the millionth time, I have no idea what's going on in Wilds of Eldrain, unfortunately. I'm sure it's a great set and I'd love to know about it, but it doesn't feel like it's as pushed or it's as focused on as everything else that's happening in Magic. So would people feel as mad, I wonder, if Magic the Gathering story was like fantastic with some Brandon Sanderson level stuff and we were also getting all this great IP coming in, you know? I don't know. But I have noticed that people seem to be getting less mad when the IP is something they enjoy. The same people who are mad about The Walking Dead, I know personally, loved the uh, Dungeons and Dragons crossover. And some, some of those same people loved Warhammer crossover. They had no complaints. And it's because the cards were mechanically sound, the decks played well against each other, you could take a deck and play it in any given pod and have a good time. People like when cards work well, IP crossover or not, they seem to really enjoy it. And the more of these come out, the more the less people I hear saying that this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. But you still do hear it, and I just wonder why. I think specifically for the Warhammer ones, it's because the same type of people who are into Magic the Gathering are definitely gonna be into Warhammer. They have they're intrinsically linked in a way. You go to any hobby store throughout America at least, you'll find these things for sure. You'll find DD. You'll find Warhammer, you'll find Magic the Gathering, and Pokemon. You'll always find them, so I think that's that was less jarring for Magic the Gathering players when they introduced D&D and Warhammer. I think The Walking Dead was out of left field for some people. The Fortniteification of Magic the Gathering I think is another thing people like to talk about, but I don't think that's happening. Every time we get an IP crossover, at least a major one, with the Warhammer, the Doctor Who, um, it looks like the upcoming Fallout decks, they take a lot of time to make sure it's these are like really well done, really well researched products that they're adding to Magic the Gathering um, that are representative of their IPs. It's not just things that they're throwing into the game. Some of the secret layers I will concede are basically just Fortniteification. The Walking Dead ones, while mechanically interesting, I don't feel that the Daryl card represented Dale very much. I do think Negan represents Negan. I think Rick represents Rick. Daryl creates walkers. That felt weird, you know? Glenn basically just attacks and drew, draws cards, has Shulk, Doesn't that just felt really generic, could have been on any creature. Michonne creating the two walkers felt pretty on theme, but otherwise it was just another generic card. Sometimes some of the secret layers really do feel like Fortnite, but a lot of the times they don't. A lot of times they're just like little splashes of personality you can add to your decks. I for one am really excited whenever I see a new secret layer that's just a couple characters, Hopefully not mechanically unique, like the Walking Dead ones, again, was another problem. They were mechanically unique, and we didn't get reprints of them for a long time. But whenever I see a non-mechanically unique uh, secret layer that's reskins of things, I get super excited. I love the idea of throwing Ash in my hammer deck. I know I just argue that's probably not a good thing for visibility, but it's super fun to me, and that helps me enjoy the game, you know? Same thing when I attach my Ash Destined Survivor with my Morgul Knife, you know, as my tattooed Ink Moth Nexus that I tapped and activated with a snow-covered planes that looks like a computer desktop, attacks my opponent for lethal. That's fun to me, you know? Like, I'm not bothered by that. I think it's just cool, reskins. People love reskinning things in their fighting games or having items from other games in their MMOs, you know? When I played Diablo 3, I loved the little StarCraft ship that followed me around and collected gold for me. I thought that was really cool. It's the little touches like that that really do bring things to life. Now, granted, Magic the Gathering has its own things that already make things special. We have a bunch of alt art that are still Magic the Gathering related, but sometimes it's fun to just like, 
you know, let go. Let fun things happen. Anyway, I didn't want to belabor this point. I just think Universes Beyond is cool and hopefully some point in this video that I made also made you think it was kind of cool. I think the idea of getting all your action figures and just, you know, just smash them together and see what happens. It's, it's kind of cool sometimes. But yeah, uh, if you liked the video, please go ahead and like it. If you want to subscribe, I'd love you to do that. Otherwise, have a fantastic day, y'all.